Okay, good afternoon. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. So... All right, so today we're gonna do the third part in a three-part series on Boaz. We were looking at the love story in scripture, uh, Book of Ruth, uh, Boaz, the Redeemer, the uh, the White Knight in uh, Ruth's life, where she's able to uh, to turn around completely um, what she had, which was emptiness. She had uh, she had despair. She had a lack of hope. She had uh, uh, every every imaginable trauma in life, including kind of the curse of being a Moabite, which requires 10 generations separation from the Israelites. But despite all of that, Boaz gave her a blanket of covering, protection, guardianship, uh, and redeemed her with a price. So we discussed in the last two uh, pieces that Boaz himself is the redeemer, kind of like God provided uh, Jesus Christ to redeem us. And there are five components to the blanket uh, in the in the in the story in chapter three verse four, uh, it talks about how Boaz shared uh, the blanket at night, and Ruth was cold, and uh, Naomi told it told her to lay at his feet, you know, dress her best, wear her best perfume, and go ahead and lay at his feet and just wait for instructions. And so, when he did find out that it's Ruth, um, he said, "Wow, you know." This woman has truly submitted to me. She's put herself at my feet, which is a real, that's that's a real statement of honor and respect. If you know anything about um, the role that feet play in Asia and India, it's considered an honor and respect to touch somebody's feet. So that represents submission. But Boaz did more than that. He not only accepted her, he showed her tremendous favor. Uh, there came a point in the story where he had to redeem her and he had to purchase for a price. He had to purchase uh, Ruth, uh, the land, the, uh, the, the the property, the inheritance rights, um, and then took her as a wife, uh, showed her great favor, both before, before he married her and after. He showed her favor. He showered on her blessings. Um, uh, the word says that uh, he gave her additional gleanings and told the men not to harass her and trouble her. So it's important to understand the role of Boaz was as a family protector, a guardian, and a redeemer. And that is the role of the father in our life. And that's the role of a father in a family. Okay, so I'm going to read from uh, verse 3, 11 and 12 in the book of Ruth. Chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. It says, And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it's true that I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there's another that's more closely related than I. So, this is Boaz talking to uh, Ruth and, uh, and saying, Look, I've already told everybody in the town that you're incredible. And that I want you and that you're mine, but there's an order here. There's an order, and somebody else has first rights. So he cleared the first rights and uh, was able to finally uh, purchase. So Boaz offered Ruth protection and covering the form of part of his blanket, um, which is that represents guardianship, covering, protection related to Psalm 91, where God says that He's a shield about us, a covering over us, a, a banner over us. Uh, Jehovah Nisi, the, the, the banner, the covering, and he's a provider. Uh, we've talked about the God of El Shaddai, El meaning Almighty Lord God Almighty, and then Shaddai meaning provider of more than enough. So provision in the form of uh, all the things that Ruth needed, shelter, food, um, favor, and uh, so he shares part of the blanket and Ruth only requested a little bit of the blanket, but he shared that blanket and sent her home early so that nobody would see anything wrong in uh, in having a woman there at his feet. So the idea to protect him and protect her reputation and his reputation. So again, he's looking out, he's protecting her. So um, in Ruth 2 verse 10, it says, 
At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground, saying, she asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? What she means is that she's a Moabite, um, and in the uh, Jewish tradition, the Moabites were cursed for 10 generations that they could not combine into an Israeli family or, or become part of that. Um, there's more to that story, but, but suffice it to say that in order for Boaz to accept Ruth, he had to break some traditions. So he broke tradition, he took the Moabite female, and he cared for Naomi, uh, Ruth's mom, or stepmom, just as much, okay? Uh, he showed favor. Uh, in Ruth 2.16, it says, uh, he tells his men, Boaz tells his men, even pull out some extra stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up, and don't, don't push back on her, don't rebuke her. Ruth 2.16, okay? So you see genuine acceptance and redemption despite her qualifications as a Moabite or lack of qualifications as an Israelite. Uh, he provided a covering and a protection. He showed a great favor, uh, including Naomi. You know, so he cared for the whole family. Uh, he showed love and kindness and gentleness. These are godly, loving characters out of Colossians chapter 3 and 1 Corinthians 13. You know, Christmas season, we talk about God being the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace. Um, well, that's how you get the Prince of Peace is to submit underneath the covering of the love of God. And Ruth did that. She submitted herself at the feet of the Redeemer, who is Boaz, uh, willingly. Nobody can force her to do that, but she did that. She also uh, submitted to Naomi's advice. So she respected her elders. Um, in verse uh, Ruth 3, verses 3 and 4, it says this. Uh, Naomi says, wash, put on perfume, get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you're there until he's finished eating and drinking. When he lies down after dinner, note the place where he is lying and then go and uncover his feet and lie down. So she purposely laid out his feet. Uh, she waited until his meal was finished. Um, and then she waited for instructions. So that, that speaks to obedience, it speaks to submission, it speaks to favor. Um, Ruth 4, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. So that submission, that obedience, that favor, uh, that genuine acceptance um, in the story of Ruth, that redemption, uh, that, that favor led to what? Love. So the lonely widow was now in love and married, being covered and protected by a fantastic guy. She could have chosen a younger man, but um, she waited and she listened and she worked and she showed up in his field and uh, worked hard. And there we are. That's basically the book of uh, Ruth, the most incredible love story in scripture. And we were looking at the qualities of Boaz, that, um, you know, that, that he's the guardian, the protector, the redeemer, a man of noble character, a, um, a, uh, a businessman, an entrepreneur, well-respected in the community, a city gates man, um, man after God's own heart. He, he, was, he was a man after the king. Anyway, uh, that's enough. That's the five corners of Boaz. I know a blanket only has four. But there are five corners to this particular blanket because there's a spiritual covering, covering of love as well. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. I wish you a very happy holiday and Merry Christmas. God bless.